I don't usually show off my PC cases, but when I do, the finest baby. Room for activities, modularity, strip it down all you want. Yeah. No problem with the heat either. Know what I mean? Looking for an intimate moment? The finesse is something sexy. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and welcome to another video. Notebooks today are getting quieter, they're getting cooler, they're getting more powerful and they're also getting slimmer. So very thin machines on the market right now, very, very impressive. But this is possible thanks to the hardware advancement, uh, but also the new cooling systems that are being integrated inside these machines. And if you're in the market for a gaming machine, gaming notebook, then you stumbled upon the right video because today we'll be comparing NVIDIA's Maxwell 900M series GPUs uh, against each other and versus the desktop counterparts so you get a better idea of how they perform in the general performance sphere. Uh, and uh, also give us a like if you'd want us to compare them to the Radeon uh, mobile uh, GPUs in the future and we'll make sure to deliver. And so in this comparison, we got uh, quite the range, starting with a Razer Blade Pro that has a GTX 960M with four gigabytes of VRAM. Moving up a bit, the Gigabyte P35K V3 with a GTX 965M that has four gigabytes of VRAM as well. Then the Eurocom M5 Pro with a GTX 970M, a three gig card on our model. And finally, top of the line, Asus G751, the latest model with G-Sync and has a beastly GTX 980M with four gigabytes of video memory. And I also would like to point out that uh, the CPU on all of these notebooks is the same, the Core i7-4720HQ at 2.6 gigahertz with turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz. The games were installed on a 7200 RPM disc and the only difference between these machines is the system memory with 24 gigabytes on the ASUS model, 8 gigabytes on the Eurocom and the Gigabyte machine with options to upgrade and 16 gigabytes of the Razer Blade Pro. And so here's the full spec sheet comparing all these GPUs. Now this table uh, tells us only part of the story, but based on the CUDA core count, you can kind of tell how these will perform in games uh, in comparison to each other. And first, firing up 3D Mark to establish sort of a base for synthetic benchmarks. And the difference between the graphics score is fairly significant. And I wanted to see how the mobile GPU um, compares to the desktop lineup, just so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Uh, and the desktop cards are shown in orange for easier distinction. And you can see here the 980M lends itself well between the GTX 970 and the 960 and having that type of power on the notebook is still pretty impressive. And the 970M is just below the GTX 960, which I would say is still totally playable for the notebook standard. Now let's jump into some games. And while I was testing everything with high settings, just to see how much performance could be squeezed out, the interesting thing to notice are the performance gains that you get once going one level higher through the lineup. And while the lower end models, the 960M and the 965M, seem to struggle a little bit to keep up with playable frame rates, you have to remember Nvidia's GeForce experience that optimizes in-game settings for playable frame rate so the 960M is more of a low to medium GPU, the 965M is a tier higher for medium settings, the 970M is your high settings GPU, and the 980M would allow you to just max out your game with a few settings tweaked for constant 60 plus FPS. Now for temperature comparison, this is not exactly fair just because each of these machines utilize different cooling system, but from our testing, there isn't a particular pattern. Um, this just highlights though that the performance of our 960M inside the Razer Blade Pro could have been hindered by the high load temperatures, while the incredibly silent and efficient cooling on the ASUS model allowed us to squeeze all that available power out of the 980M. And I think the Eurocom and the Gigabyte machines offer uh, sort of a nice balance of incredibly thin notebooks with appropriate but slightly louder cooling. 
And so what we can take away from this is the future of mobile gaming looks really promising and already satisfactory. The performance of the 980M and the 970M is really on par with the desktop counterparts like the 960 and higher and that is very impressive considering you can literally have all that power in your backpack as you're gaming without any compromises. Now don't forget that achieving satisfactory gaming experience on the notebook is a balancing act between setting the right settings for the hardware. It's not all about just maxing out the settings and seeing how things perform. And I hope that this limited to NVIDIA mobile GPU showdown has been helpful. If you're in the market for a mobile gaming machine, now you sort of have the base comparison on which GPU performs at what level compared to the desktop counterparts and compared to uh, between each other as well. And uh, give us a like if you'd want to see us uh, bring in some Radeon notebooks and compare the, to them uh, uh, to Maxwell GPUs and seeing how they perform and seeing what the temperature's like and etc. So if you enjoy this content, give us a like and um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe because we'll have a lot more cool content coming up in the future and we'll see you in the next one. Almost finished.